John's model of structured reflection is another critical model that we can consider for the reflective practitioner. Um, it's um, quite a simple model. It has two phases to it. The first phase is looking in on the situation. Um, this involves the teacher focusing on particular aspects of themselves and paying attention to really what was happening in the classroom. So looking in on the situation is the first part of this process. The second part is quite simply looking out of the situation and trying to describe it so that others might actually understand it from your perspective and even from a theoretical perspective. And as such, it's situated then in, in five sources of knowledge which uh, John's described. Um, and each of these sources of knowledge have um, very particular cues that we can use as teachers to guide our thinking and reflection. Um, for example, looking in, um, he said very importantly that you need to find a place where you can actually focus on yourself. Um, he saw this as a very um, solitary activity in the initial stages because you need to concentrate and have space and time for reflection. Pay attention to not only your thoughts, but the feelings, the emotions which have been generated by the experience. And then, of course, you need to record um, the experiences that you've had, writing them down, um, or maybe even using an audio tape. Looking out then requires um, writing that description um, within the sort of situational surrounding of the thoughts and the emotions. Um, and then trying to find what is significant in that. Um, this is called looking out because in a way it's like trying to describe it for somebody else to understand. And in this way you get a clearer understanding yourself. Um, this particular description, the looking out process, um, can be focused in the following ways. Um, we can actually talk about it from an aesthetic point of view. Or in other words, the teacher can reflect on what they were trying to do, what they were trying to achieve in their teaching, um, and why did they react the way they did um, to, say, some poor behaviour or um, some extremely good behaviour in the classroom. There's also a personal perspective to this. Um, or in other words, the teacher's reaction to uh, the experience in the classroom? A good reaction, a bad reaction? How do they feel? What are the emotions associated with that? Um, we can also look at it from an ethical perspective. Um, or in other words, the teacher should think, well, if I did something, was it in the best interests of the students or the best interest of the school? Um, and what were the, the influencing factors on the teacher in terms of their own reaction. Another perspective identified in this model is the empirics perspective. Um, this is very much starting to relate the experience with what the literature says. Or in other words, is there information or is there some knowledge which could have actually helped me deal with this situation in the classroom? And um, a very significant part of uh, this model, this particular perspective, is about reflexivity. And this is a term which we'll come across in future lectures. Um, reflexivity is about making connections with our understanding. Does it reflect to previous experiences that we've had in the classroom? And therefore, can we handle the situation better? Um, and what's very good about these perspectives is that we can represent them in a, a model which um, is very easy to understand. Um, at one component we have looking in, finding the space, describing what happened, um, that very solitary component, but then looking out, describing it for somebody else for our own purposes. And within the looking out, we get those different perspectives, the aesthetics perspective, um, what was the teacher trying to achieve the personal perspective? How did they feel? The ethics, what um, factors were influencing them? The empirics, the knowledge that they're drawing on. And then reflecting back on previous experiences and making cognitive connections.